Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I want to show you how to listen for events on your Java Discord bot. Okie dokie, welcome back everybody. In the last video I showed you how to make a Discord bot using Java, Java Discord API to be exact. And so if you haven't watched that episode, go back and make sure that you watch it so you know how to do, um, so you know how to have a bot. And then this episode, I'll show you how to actually listen for events, which is a very important thing when it comes to bots, okay? Now, if you don't know what an event is, it's simply something that happens. So that can be anything. Sending a message, uh, reacting to a message with an emoji, uh, deleting a message, uh, giving someone a role, um, pressing a button, all those kinds of things that happen within Discord are events. So if we go to my test server here, sending a message is one of the most basic events that you can start to listen for because a bot, essentially what a bot does, most of what it does, it listens for messages and it also listens for commands that are run. Okay, so before the Java slash command API, um, you had to actually listen for every single message sent on the server to see if it's a, um, a command or not. But now you can do slash, and then you have all these commands built directly into your server, which is really cool, or into your bot, which is really cool. So you don't have to worry about that. But still, either way, listening for messages is really important. And once we figure out how to listen for message events, um, this means that we can learn how to listen for any other event really easily. So what does it mean specifically to listen to an event? We know what an event is. It's simply something that happens, literally any type of action that happens. And so when you listen for an event, you're simply making a piece of code within your bot that runs a, uh, runs a piece of code whenever the event occurs. So we're essentially listening for that event to happen. And when it happens, when we detect that it happens using our bot, we're gonna run some code. So for example, if someone on our server types potato and our bot catches the message event, we're going to print out something like, uh, potatoes are really cool. So let's try that out, okay? So let me just show you what I mean if you don't understand still. So if you wanna make an event, there's multiple ways you can do it. Um, you can either do it within your main class here or you can do it with a, within a different class. But let me show you just in here first. This is the most basic thing. So, so to make this a class that supports event listening, go to here and do extends listener adapter from GDA. And now we can go down here and we can override whatever listener we want to use. So for example, the message received event is one of the events that we can listen for. So if we want to listen for that, we can do public void and it shows the autocomplete suggestions here. And these are all the different methods you can essentially inherit from the listener adapter class we just extended. So we can select any of these and these are all the different event listeners that we can use. So let's just go ahead and look for the one that I was talking about. So on message, and then received. And as you can see here, they all follow a specific pattern. You have on, because you know an event listens for when something happens, and then the name of the event. So message received event. So it's called on message received. So it kind of makes sense, right? So go ahead and press tab or just double click it, whatever you want to do. And there you go. So you're essentially overriding this method provided by the listener adapter class. And we can provide our, our own custom code here to give it some custom functionality when we um, detect that a message has been sent on our server. All right, so this is the key. This is where you get all of your information from this this event uh, variable here that's passed in as a parameter. So we can do event dots and we have all these different methods here that gives us a bunch of information. So um, different events are gonna give us different information but all of the events do have certain things in common. They give you the guild usually. Um, well, maybe sometimes the channel depends on the event uh, probably. Uh, JDA because everything's using JDA, um, all these kinds of things. So you get used to it very easily. So when because it's a message received event, it makes sense for it to have such information such as the message itself, which is here, the author, the person who sent the message, uh, the member, that's another way of representing who sent the message, uh, the channel, channel type, guild channel, all these different things. It's a little overwhelming, but um, again, you'll get used to it. So the first thing we want to do is just simply send a message uh, into the console just so that we know it's actually working. It's listening for the event properly. So s out, um, a message has been sent. And there we go. So now that we have this event listener here, we need to register it to our bot. So when the bot starts up, it's going to set up the listener automatically. So we can do uh, add event listeners. 
and then pass in uh, an, an optional amounts of classes that represent your event listener. So we can do new Discord bot. And uh, now it's going to essentially behind the scenes find this and register it for us and then listen for events. All right. So let's go ahead and start this and see what happens. Hopefully it'll work. Let's find out. So let's go ahead and send a message. So we'll say, I like cheese. Nothing happened on here, but if we go to our console, it says a message has been sent. Awesome. So that's how we know it's working. So every time we send a message, this will this chunk of code here, this method will be run, and it's really cool. And that simple, you know, functionality allows you to do many powerful things when you're making Discord bots. So this is like a stepping stone for making really cool stuff. So let's see what else we can do with this. So this isn't very useful on its own. So let's see what information we can grab. So we'll say. Um, Let's do, let's, let's get the message. So event dot get message dot, and we can get all this information about the message. Again, it's kind of overwhelming, but you'll get used to it. And so we can delete the message. Uh, we can get clear the reactions, add reactions, a bunch of cool stuff. Get the author of the message, uh, get the buttons if there's any, uh, but let's just get the text. Let's keep it simple, right? Let's not go crazy. So let's figure out how we can do that. So something that returns a string. So here we go. Get content display, get content raw. So probably this one, um, one of these. So we'll do get content raw. And so this will be the message that was sent. So we'll store that into a variable message sent is equal to that. There we go. And then now we'll just repeat it back. So how can we, instead of sending it into the, the program console, how can we send it back into here? Now, there's different ways you can do that, of course, but one of the most simple ways of sending a message is to do event dot get text channel. So this is the this represents the text channel that the message was sent in. And with a text channel, you can send messages, right? So we can do send message and then pass in a message. That's either, you can either pass in a string to that or you can pass in a message that you can craft, but we'll just pass in a string, keep it simple. So we'll say, um, this was sent, and then we'll just repeat back the message that was sent. So it's like a parrot type of thing. And you may think that this is it, but as it's kind of warning you here, every time, um, well, first of all, if you do control Q, you can see that this returns not void, like it's doing something, but it returns message action. So it is doing something obviously, but, we have to use this message action here to actually queue it into the system. So it's not going to run just by doing this. You need to do dot and then queue. So doing that will actually queue it to be sent uh, as soon as possible. All right. That's just how that works. Anything, um, any type of action you do with JDA usually needs to be sent with an actual queue at the very end. So that's a, that's another thing you'll get used to. Okay. So just make sure you don't forget Q it, it'll happen a lot where you forget it at first, but the more and more you do it, the more you get used to it. I still forget it sometimes. All right. So let's try this out now. So let's go ahead and restart our bot and see what happens. Okie dokie. So we'll go back here and say, um, you smell like my cat. And there we go. Oh crap, look at this. <laughs> and you may notice that it's actually being delayed by every so often just so it's not overloading the system because, and that's sort of what the queue does behind the scenes. It's not gonna spam the Discord API servers and get you banned or something like that. Um, I assume that's what that is. But anyway, the point is that we have a problem here, right? It's just essentially compounding the messages over and over. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because the listener that we have, it listens for the message received event. So we, we um, received a message from this, right? And so we repeat it back and then the bot receives its own message. So when we listen for the message received event, we send a message back into the chat and then we just triggered another event from that. So it's just a cascading event sending sort of thingy. So it's a feedback loop, really, it's what it's called. Um, so we wanna make a way for us to not have this happen. <laughs> so let's go back here. And this is like a classic problem you first run into when you start making these kinds of, kinds of things. So a simple fix for this is to only um, process the event code if it's not sent from a bot, it's actually sent from a person. So there's an easy way to determine that. Usually you can do if event dot, and there's like a, usually a method to determine if someone's a bot. So how about get author dot is bot, there we go. So event dot get author, which is a user object. And then you have to see, is it a bot, All right? And then we'll just negate that. So if it's not a bot, then we'll just throw this code inside of it. And this code will only run if it's not a bot. And therefore, the problem should be fixed. So restart that. Let's try again. 
I like lettuce. This was sent, I like lettuce. So there we go, it's not cascading anymore, repeating over and over and over for infinity. It only sends it when we want it to. Awesome. So that's cool. Um, so just playing around with these sorts of things will get you pretty far. So let's just play around with a few more things before we you know, go to the next episode here. Uh, I would show you everything, but you need to play around on your own. And as we progress through this little series, uh, you'll see different things and you'll just learn along the way, okay? So you may notice, uh, something I just noticed is that if you do event author, that returns a user, but you can also do get member. So what is the difference between a user and a member? A user is a specific user within Discord in general. So you can get general Discord information. So is it a bot, get their avatar um, URL, uh, get a private channel to them, try to at least. Some people have their channel, their DMs closed. That's what that means, private channel is a DM. Um, get the mutual guild. So if you go into your Discord, if you look at your friends list, you can see what other people, um, their, your, your mutual guilds are with your friends, right? So you can see what guilds you're both in, right? And all that stuff. Um, so that's just like your general Discord information object. But if you want to get specific information about the user within your guild or within your discord server you do get member get member has all that so the member is like a user that's within a your guild specifically right uh, remember a guild is just a discord server so it'll give you information about the user within the scope of the discord server that the bot is currently in okay hopefully that makes sense so if we want to do let's see what we can do with that so we can do a lot of things. We can ban the person if we have uh, the proper permissions. We can deafen them. So anything that makes sense for like maybe a server admin or something like that within this server only, this guild only, this is something that we can do with the member object that we can affect the player with. I hope that sentence made sense, but I think you get the point. So if you want to do guild specific stuff, use the member object, all right? So like I told you before, you don't have to do it within the main class. You can also do it with, you know, outside classes, which is very, very simple. So just open your structure here and make a new class. Call it uh, whatever you want. I'm going to call it um, bot listeners. You can call yours booty listeners if you want. So we can do extends listener adapter, same to classes before. And then we'll just copy that code over from our main class over to that class. And then we can remove this from the main class and just move this as well and paste it there. And now we can go back and do new bot listeners. And now the same thing will, it'll work the same way. It's just that it's in a different class. Pretty simple stuff, right? There we go. Cool. And furthermore, one more thing before we go is that uh, now that we know how to make a simple event listener for message received event, we can use that information to know how to listen for other events, like I said. So if we want to listen for other events, we can just add it to this as another uh, event that we're listener that we're overriding. So we can do public. So let's do something cool. Let's make it so that when a channel is deleted, it reports that in the general channel. So some sort of information type of thing. So just double click this, get rid of this. And so... Let's figure out what we can grab from this. So if we do events, we can see that it doesn't have as much information as the last one. So we can get the channel that was deleted. That's interesting. The channel type, um, the guild. It always gave you the guild pretty much. Get the GDA, of course. Response number. All right, cool. So not too much information, but we can work with this. So we want to get the name of the channel if that's possible. It may not be possible. Let's just try that. So event.getchannel.get name. Okay, cool. So we can get the name. Awesome. And so let's just throw that into a variable. So channel name, great. And then now we want to figure out how to send a message message specifically in the general channel. So go back here. So everything in Discord has an identifier, an ID. That means uh, people, channels, uh, messages, uh, the Discord server itself, the guild itself, literally roles even, literally anything. They're all associated with IDs, which is useful because in your code here, you can grab stuff without, you know, just by using its ID, which is a way to do it prog programmatically. So if you want to, you know, reference this channel here, you can do it by copying the ID. If you don't have that, I'll show you a second how to enable that. Copy the ID, and then uh, now we can grab the channel via the ID. So we can do event.getjda or get guild. The guild will contain all of the text channels, right? That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So get guild dot find, or let's, find, let's figure out what the, the method is. So get, there we go, get text channel by ID. 
And then for an ID, you can usually pass in a string or a long. It doesn't really matter. So we can do L for long. And that'll probably return null if it doesn't exist. That's usually how that would work. So let's go ahead and store that result. So text channel general. So import that. And now we'll check to see if it's null or not in case, you know, general was the one that was deleted for some reason. So if general is not equal to null, then we want to send a message in, in general. We can do that because it's a text channel. So general.send message. We can say the channel and then escape quotes, channel name, escape quotes was deleted. All right. And then don't forget to queue it. I almost forgot. Don't forget to queue your messages when you send them. And hopefully that should work. Hopefully that makes sense. Essentially, we're just making another event listener, which is, again, a way for us to uh, run some code when something specific happens. Uh, an event is just something that happens. That's just a simple way of thinking about it. So first, we're grabbing the channel, uh, the name of the channel that was deleted. And then we're grabbing the general chat using the general chat's ID. We grab that from Discord. And then if the channel that we grabbed is not null, meaning that it actually exists, then we're going to send a message in it telling them what channel was deleted. So let's restart this and see what happens. So let's make a new channel to test this with called um, Dewey. Okay, channel. Now let's go ahead and delete it. Delete channel, delete. And there we go, look at that. It says the channel Dewey was deleted. So it worked perfectly, exactly as we expected. Awesome. And now let me show you how you can get the IDs if you don't have this option. So um, this is actually, I think, something you have to enable if you don't have it enabled. So if you go to somewhere in here, advanced probably. And then yeah, developer mode. Yeah, there you go. So uh, go to advanced, and then enable developer mode. And that should give you that option, okay? And that's pretty much it for this episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like I said, I didn't want to overload you, so I taught you as much as I could. And now you should know how to make event listeners. You know what an event is. You know what an event listener is. And now you can listen for all kinds of cool things. And I really challenge you guys to play around with event listeners and see what kind of cool functionality you can create with your Discord bot just to test your skills out. And uh, let's stay tuned for next episode. Hopefully you're excited for that where we're going to learn about something new. So thanks for watching and peace.